The theme could be, for my little talk this morning, is fun. You know, when I was um, first starting to be a therapist, and I was taking a lot of workshops with different people, uh, I took a did a retreat with Joseph Campbell. I loved his book, Hero with a Thousand Faces. And his teaching was to follow your bliss. And that's, of course, true, except... I know everyone in that retreat mainly thought following your bliss was a very serious business. It was sober, and it is sober. And it was upright, and it is upright. But it's not boring. It's not tiring. It's not something you should do. It's fun. It's fun to stay true to yourself. It's fun to be alive. It's fun to be free. It's fun to live your life in freedom and love. It's fun. So fun is a confirming sign, or can be a confirming sign, that you're, you're, you're doing what you love. The trap of it, of course, is that lots of things can be fun. These children's games can be fun, but they're not going to get you anywhere. They're short-term pleasure. So there's a difference between short-term pleasure and the fun of being alive. And the great trap is if you're chasing it. If you're chasing pleasure, you'll find pleasure. And pleasure usually has a price. If it doesn't have a price, no problem. If it does have a price, well, you pay the price of it. Pleasure can, you know, lead to alcoholism, destruction of families, relationships, destruction of careers in the pursuit of pleasure. But fun, if you pursue it, it's the same trap. But if it's a byproduct of being yourself and doing what you love, it's a confirming sign. And so that's the edge. Because the egoic rationalization is, is it's fun and it doesn't hurt anybody, and so why not? Even if there's at that level of reflection, and usually there isn't. But you see the results. If it doesn't hurt anybody, no problem. But if it does hurt anybody, yourself or anyone else, don't do that one again. That's discipline. Alcoholics lack that discipline. At first it was fun, and it turns into a hell, and it seems like there's no escape. Whatever the addiction, substances, sex, relationship, family, children, whatever you call the addiction that sucks your life, that your was so pleasurable but now is a burden. When that stops, you can actually have fun. So back in the 70s and 80s, when the Buddhists were, the Vipassana things were going around, it was always so serious. I never saw Vipassana people have a good time. They were serious about their enlightenment, and it must be serious. You must take this with a life and death attitude. It must be something that you're, you have to be willing to give your life to. And you have to be willing to die for. But that doesn't make it not fun. If it's serious in a mental way, there's a lot of judgments. If there are judgments, that's not fun. If there are shoulds that you have to do, that's not fun. So just start to examine yourself and see where your suffering is, how you create it. And whether you're chasing pleasure or fun or enlightenment, what is it that you're chasing and what are the byproducts? And if you're living your life fully in freedom and fun, love, it's so much such good news.